You're good to go live, Mary Beth. Okay. Um, hi guys. I want to say hi. I am Mary Beth Temple. I'm thrilled to be back here with Craftsy. And what we're going to work on today is this extra large fidget toy. Now, what is cool about this is we're going to start with a central Mobius. So this center section is a Mobius and you can pull on the ruffles forever. <laughs> um, the cool thing about this, it's unbreakable. It is washable if you use acrylic yarn. It's a great use for scraps, although I did use a, a multicolored yarn for this one. Um, it won't break. These are really cool for people that need to sit and have something in their hands. Um, a lot of students use these, and I'm also told they are great donations for uh, facilities that have Alzheimer's patients. It gives them something to keep their hands busy. So um, there's all kinds of different fidget toys that you can make, but we're going to work on this big boy today. So uh, we're going to switch over to the main camera. And I'm going to also show you, here's a little one. <laughs> this is a great practice one to get started. But this is, this is the general gist. And this is one I did recently, which I, again, I'm just sharing out of interest because somebody asked me if I could make one that looked like a sunflower. So here we go, but here's our big boy up close. Now I used, um, I would say three quarters of a skein of yarn on this. It is a, uh, a thing that takes a lot of yarn because by the time you get to the end, there are 800 and something stitches. And of course I know that they have put the link in the chat, but you can go download the pattern, which I have provided for you guys via Craftsy. So you can download that PDF pattern right now and follow along. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is chain 17. I'm using a slightly larger hook than I would normally just because I like, um, I like it to be nice and loose when I'm teaching on camera so that I don't seem to be struggling with anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is chain 17, two, three, four, Five. I also tension my yarn oddly. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Doesn't mean that you have to tension your yarn oddly. Now, for all of my projects, I like to work in the back or the bump of the chain. So instead of going into the front or the V, the way most of us were taught. I like to put my foundation row for any project, not just this one, in the back or the bump of the chain. Now we're going to be working in double crochet, so we're going to start in the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. So I've got my yarn over. Insert my hook under that bump. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two twice. Now, if you would prefer, you can work in the front if that's what you're used to, but this does make a really nice edge. And we're going to be working in both sides of this first row. So it's super helpful to have a really nice even edge at the bottom to get going. The other thing I wanna point out right at the very beginning when you've got your turning chain here, that chain three that you use to turn, you want a stitch marker right there at the beginning, and we'll find out why in a little bit. Stitch markers are really important for this project. It's an unusual way of working, and if you're not used to it, having the stitch marker there, it just it tells you where to go and what to grab when, and it's going to make your life easier. I do not crochet over the tail because I'm going to use that tail to tighten up the first and last stitch of the row when I put it into my Mobius shape. So this is not an arena where I would crochet over the tail. And we're making a Mobius. So a Mobius is a mathematical unit that only has one side. Now, this central row has two sides 
because it's not a Mobius yet. But after we get the Mobius set up, which we're just about to do, you will have a very, very large round with only one side. Now, normally, if I was going to set this up to work in the round, I would go like this, right? I'd, I'd have it so that I would go into the marker. But I want to put in a 180 degree twist. So instead of working in the top of that first stitch, I'm going to work in the bottom. So I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Let me get my working yarn where I want it. This is the only tricky part of this. Once you have the Mobius set up, your life will be far easier. I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And now I'm going to put two double crochets in the same space as the round join. So that same place where I joined my round, I'm going to put two more doubles in there. Now I'm going to put three double crochets in each double crochet. And again, I'm working in the bottom, but do you see how neat that edge is? And that's because I worked in the back bump. So it's really easy to see where it is that you want to stitch. So three in each one. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat. And my good friend Katie at Craftsy will let me know so I can answer them. So I'm going to keep going, putting three double crochets in each stitch. Now, much like when Julia Child puts the batter in the oven and brings out a cake, I've already gotten there. <laughs> on this one because I'm sure that you didn't want to watch me double crochet for an hour. So let me get this one back on my hook. So this is the last double crochet. This is the last bottom stitch that I'm going to work in. So we have one, two, three. Now this is where the fun part happens. I'm going to go reach into this middle opening. I'm going to grab that stitch marker and I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to take it out because it's in my way. Now I'm going to continue to put three double crochet in each stitch, but I'm going to start at the top of that chain three where the stitch marker was. So there's one, two, three. One, two, three. So what's going to happen as I keep going, I'm working now in the tops of the double crochet. Remember, this is still a row. Hang on one second here. I think I got twisted. <laughs> yes, I did. That's what I get. <gasps> there is where my marker was. Can I tell you I have made a hundred of these and it's only on camera when I get twisted up. 
let's try that again. So that's where the marker was. One, two, three. Now we're going to keep going. So you can see, and this is how I knew I had made a mistake. You can see these are the double crochets from the central row because they're standing up straight. So I'm going to keep putting three in each one. One, two, three. I'm going to show you that one more time just because I confused the issue and I want to make sure that you're seeing me do it correctly. So our stitch marker had been here It was at that uh, chain three. That was the last of the double crochets that I put my three in. And I'm going to grab that stitch marker, take it out, and put three double crochets in there. There we go. Now we're going across the top of the nine central doubles. One, two, three, one, two, three. So the reason I was telling you to leave your tail is once we get this twist settled in here, you're going to want to take that tail and join right here. Do you see where that little gap is? When I'm finished with this round, what I'm going to want to do is take that tail and tighten up that area right there just to make sure that it is less visible. I also strongly recommend you start weaving your tails in after you get this round done because it's really hard to find them later. <laughs> but uh, once again, I wouldn't want to crochet over the tail. Do we have any questions while I'm stitching away on the boring part? Okay, I'm going to grab again another one that's already. Do you save the tutorial? Oh, <laughs> that's for you, Katie. So we're going to jump to the bigger one. So you can see here is my, pardon me, I said earlier nine central double crochets. That's for the little one. This is the big one. So we have 15 double crochets in here. And we have formed our twist. And it's a good idea to check it. So here is the round that we just did that we have three double crochets in each one. And then when we join our round at the beginning, so we would have joined our round there and then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna join right here let me go ahead and start the third round. I'm going to join here, chain three, one, two, three. Place your markers so you know what you're doing. Two double crochets in the same place as the round join. and then three double crochets in each one around. So you're going to do that for round two. And at the end of round two, you will have 270 double crochets. And then at the end of round three, you will have 810 double crochets. And this is why I was telling you how much yarn this takes. This takes a lot of yarn.
So this is what I mean about one side. If I keep going along the edge, and again, this only has two rounds on it. This does not have the third round on it. This is the one I use when I'm teaching. And I keep pulling on that one side, that one side, that one side. No matter how big that round is, eventually <laughs> I'm going to come to the stitch marker. So it's one giant round. It's an infinity loop. It's like a figure eight almost. All right. The last thing that we're going to do after you finished your third round, again, I'm only showing you here with two rounds done. Um, so Jess asked, did I change yarn colors for the sunflower fidget? The sunflower fidget actually has different stitches in it. I was just showing you that to be amusing, <laughs> but, um, that has, uh, that one's crazy. <laughs> that has all kinds of different stitches in it. It has chain loops in the middle. It has petals on the outside. That is a very different project. I merely was pointing that out to show you how different these could all be. I will get that on my blog eventually. I just haven't quite got to it yet. So for the edging, the one that I showed you earlier, there are all different things that you could put on the edging, but I suggest you do something because the other thing is people pull and they play and they fidget with the fidget toy. Um, this could get very stretched out if it doesn't have some kind of edging on it. So the one that I showed you at the beginning, I did my join and then all I did was slip stitch all the way around. If you're using a color changing yarn, like I did, you get a really nice look. Where's my big guy? And that's just to make it sturdier so that with use, it doesn't stretch out and become unusable. There are a couple other options that you could do. You could do a Pico. I've seen one with a Pico, which would be chain three. Slip stitch in the first chain. single crochet in the next stitch. Pico, one, two, three, slip stitch in the first chain, single crochet in the next stitch. So that's a possibility. You could put a Pico edge on there that would make it even fluffier. If you want it to be more defined, you could put slip stitches in between the Pico chains instead of single crochets. And of course the other option, which I just learned recently that a lot of people don't like, I'm a firm believer in the crab stitch or reverse single crochet. I use crab stitch or reverse single crochet all the time on a variety of projects, but a friend of mine with a big Facebook page. So to do crab stitch or reverse single crochet, you're just going to single crochet as you always would, but instead of going right to left, if you're right-handed, you're going to go left to right or vice versa. You're not changing the orientation of your hook. You're just changing the order in which you make your stitches. So it was very interesting. I discovered on her Facebook page that a lot of people hate crab stitch, which I didn't know because I use it on everything. <laughs> So that's another option for a firm edging. But generally speaking, I don't like to leave that last round without any kind of edging on it because I feel like it, it's just going to stretch out. Now, if I was going to wash these, I would probably put them in a mesh bag and just go ahead and throw them in the washer and the dryer as long, obviously, as I was using acrylic yarn. And I would make sure that the center was dry because it's very, very dense. So even if you... If you uh, throw this in the dryer for a little while, you want to make sure it's really aired out. You don't want it to get moldy or, or smell funny. You uh, 
you know, you want to make sure that it's nice and dry and clean when you give it to whatever person you care to give it to. Um, so I do highly recommend acrylic for this. So now what if you wanted to make, not the sunflower specifically, I, I probably should have kept that one to myself because it's a little wacky. So I've had people, what if I wanted it bigger? What if I wanted it smaller? The thing that you have to think about is the height of your piece relative to the opening. So for this guy, for this little guy, let me see if I can open him out. I put single crochets in my center, not doubles, because I didn't need a great big amount of area. And as I said earlier, there's only nine in here where there's 15 in the big one. So you want to adjust your opening so that it accommodates the ruffle easily, but is not oversized. So this is just a little guy. So this is the single crochets in the middle. You set it up the exact same way as we did in the video. And then just one round with three double crochets in each. And then I put a single crochet edge on them. These are wildly popular at schools because whoever needs them can keep them in their pocket because they're small and also they're quiet. A lot of fidget toys, particularly those popper things, a lot of schools are banning them because they're noisy and they distract other students. Creative One asked me, how did I come up with this? I did some, so again, the mathematical Mobius is something I use a lot, not just for fidget toys. I started doing uh, infinity scarves and infinity cowls and, and wraps and things like that with the Mobius Center, because if I had this, if I had this on my <laughs> Head. Here's my Barbie doll. If I had this on my head, it'd give me this cute little wrap in the middle. So um, honestly, I did a little video on my YouTube channel on just how to do that center section and discovered that people were searching my channel looking for crochet fidget toys. So I just sat down for a week and developed a bunch of them. I have more coming. Uh, it's like potato chips. I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> Once I got interested in uh, in making these things, it's just like, well, and, and people ask me questions all the time on the videos. Um, you know, well, what if it, what if it, somebody asked me if I could do one that had like a tube and a marble. The sunflower was a, an audience request on TikTok of all places. Somebody asked me if I could make a sunflower. So I'm like, I don't know. Can I? <laughs> so, um a lot of these I just started doing just because it's a fun little math problem. And honestly, they're quick. These are certainly quicker than a, than a sweater. I will say the big guy took me a couple of hours just because there's so many stitches at the end. 810 double crochets takes a minute, you know. But still, we're talking hours, not days. And the little tiny ones, I can bang one of those out in 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and uh, Creative One also said she liked the crab stitch. She didn't know that's what it was called. Some people also call that reverse single crochet. Um, and now I'm really going to blow your mind, but then I'm going to go away, I promise. <laughs> um, somebody taught me recently how to do the crab stitch forward. I have always done it reverse single crochet because that's how I learned. But apparently, if you don't want to go in reverse, which is what a lot of people object to, you can make your first single crochet. Ugh, can't take me anywhere. And twist the hook 180 degrees, or 360 degrees, pardon me. Hook, twist, single crochet, twist. So I'm just sharing this with you because this is something I just learned recently. And you can twist it. And that gives you a different edging. But I like the I like the reverse one. That's the one that I'm used to doing. All right, Katie. Well, unless we have any more questions, I think I'm ready to roll. Thank you so much for joining us here at Craftsy. I appreciate you guys.